Yeah, it's a strange one. Um, <clears throat> with a minute and a half to go, you sort of you dare to dream that we think we might have done it, and then you know they they score a good try at the end. And look, we're really proud of that second half. Like we're disappointed with the first half, and, and I can talk about the detail of that. But the way we came out in the second half, I was really pleased with. And um, yeah, it's it's great to retain the cup. Cut a cup. I'm not gonna lie, it's a good feeling, uh, even though it was a draw and oh, it was a game we could have won there at the end. Um, yeah, the overriding emotion is is we're we're pleased. Yeah, it wasn't particularly nice. Um, we we gave them a lot of what they exactly what they wanted in that first half. We we kicked a lot, which was which was a part of our game plan, but our, our chase wasn't wasn't as good, um, and, and it allowed their dangerous runners, um, you know, especially daily and stuff, just to have exactly what they want. Loads of space to run, and, and they carved us, and uh, didn't allow us to get the the collisions we wanted on them. And then we just felt we were chasing our tails a lot of that first half. Um, but then this half time, we always spoke about it was just sorting our kick chase out, and we knew that would solve a lot of our problems, um, slowing down that first breakdown, and then just just getting up and hitting them. Um, and, and we scored some great tries in that second half. Uh, it was really pleasing. Did you believe that Scotland were still in the match at that point? At half time, we spoke about winning the second half. Um, we wanted to go out and, and win the second half. And, and you know, did we think at the time that we thought we could score you know, 31 and answer points? You know, probably not, um, given the way they played in the first half. But you know, you score one, you score another, and then you know, you you start to believe. Uh, we scored some great tries. Uh, some of them were brilliant. Sam Johnson's especially at the end to put us into the lead was was outstanding, wasn't it? Um, yeah, no, it's a it's a weird one. Like, because as you say, with like a minute to go, you're thinking we've done this, and then. Still be that that little niggle of regret about about the, the try at the end. <sighs> I, I don't know about if regret's the right word. It's um, it's disappointing to concede, and, and right under the sticks as well. You knew that it was that was. That was the game uh, gone to the draw. Um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, it's, it's a strange one. It's a strange one. Yeah, I didn't really think too much about it. Um, yeah, yeah, I just, just, just got a charge down and ran as fast as I could and managed to just have enough grass left to get get all the way in. Um, yeah, at the time I didn't. It was just it was good to, to sort of stem the flow a wee bit and and get some points on the board going into the half. And but it was it was definitely the second half effort that that did it. We we caused them all sorts of problems with our attack shape and, and our intensity we put on the ball. Um, and and yeah, we put one of the best teams of the world under heaps of pressure at home uh, at their home, which is, is really pleasing. So how how do you assess where Scotland are in six months in the World Cup? Yeah, well, we need to be pretty honest about the whole Six Nations in, in general. We've we've showed up in parts. We've played well. Second half last week against Wales. Second half this week. Um, yeah, look, we're we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. That was a really good second foray, uh, and you know we've done something we've not done for a long time, which is, is retain the Calcutta Cup, um, which, which you know means a lot to us in Scotland. And um, but there's so much of that to. T- Positives to take forward um, in terms of putting, like I said, putting one of the best teams in the world under heaps of pressure in their own backyard. Um, you know, credit to them in the first half; they played some great rugby. But I, th- I feel like we dictated the, the, the game in the second half, which was really pleasing. Um, yes. Not not as high as last year's win, um, but it ranks as a a unique game. Um, I've never been involved in a game like that as a player or a coach. Um, there's not many games of rugby end up being 31-0 to 38-31 and end up with 38-all, especially when you when you think of <clears throat> the team we're up against and what a good defence they've got. So, yeah, it's it's the most unusual game I've been involved in. Uh, the feeling at half time or the feeling at full time? <laughs> let's uh, let's go half time and then how you were feeling as the as they mounted to come back. Once before, um, Glasgow away to Toulon. I think we were thirty points to three down, and uh, the Toulon supporters were already uh, ripping up their papers and celebrating the victory. So that's what I immediately thought back to. Um, and in that day, we we end up scoring four tries in the second half. Um, and obviously, at the end, you just feel a lot of pride that the players have not only taken the game to the opposition, but scored some great tries. And I'm happy with 
very happy with the draw considering what happened in the first half, but the players are, are absolutely gutted. At the end of the game, they're really disappointed not to have won, which seems incredible to think when you're 31-0 down to, to have accomplished that in the second half. But we, we talked about, um, I think Stuart mentioned, we talked about just winning back respect in the second half. Um, winning the second half, that was that was going to be a huge challenge. We're playing a team that had scored 31 un unanswered points and were in control for, for 30 of those 40 minutes. I think the, the last 10 minutes we showed a lot more intensity and um, cohesion in our defence uh, and that forced a couple of errors. And obviously Stuart's try was was um, a bonus on on top of that uh, defence. But to go out and score another five tries in the second half is is still hard to believe. Last week, Warren Gatlin said he felt Wales took their eye off the ball. Eddie said the same about England today. Did you sense that, that, that possibly they might get complacent with that? that mindset? Well, I think sport and, and in rugby, you, you, have a, you have a confidence that one team has or a momentum. And if the other team starts to play well, what you tend to find is not both teams have the same amount of confidence about what they're doing. It, it goes to the other team, and that seemed to be the case. Um, they changed; they had to change the way they were playing in the second half. They were kicking a lot more because, at times, um, when they were moving the ball, we were we were getting errors. We got an, obviously an interception try, and we were tackling behind the gain line, which wasn't happening in the first half. And we were getting confidence in the fact that we were finding space and. The players' fitness showed really, really well in the second half, and and also the bench made a made a big impact. Um, so, it, I think if if the game had kept on going, who know, who knows? But um, I think we we're just disappointed at the end not to have held out, but to get into that position uh, is an incredible achievement. How much does this change the way you feel about where your team is now? You know, you will get them back in the, in the summer, and, and then it all really starts rolling towards the World Cup. It doesn't change that much about the team. I think I know a lot more about individuals today. Um, there, there's two or three players have really stepped up. I know Magnus Bradbury was outstanding at number eight um, in a game where the opposition kicked the ball a lot to, to him. Uh, and he showed real courage to, to play 80 minutes and carry hard and tackle hard after having missed four months of the season leading into this uh, tournament. Sam Johnson, how he responded to couple of errors defensively, which were down to his enthusiasm early on in the game, um, and then play some excellent rugby, really good low tackles on their big men, score a world-class try, one of the probably the best one of the best tries Scotland's ever scored. Um, Darcy Graham, an another person, second start for Scotland, scores two tries and outstanding in defence as well. Um, so there's there's a number of individuals we now have a clearer picture of what they what they can do when tested. Uh, and there's no tougher environment to, to come and test yourself uh, than Twickenham. Uh, and that mindset, that stability, um, will mean they should have a big career ahead of them with Scotland. Were there actually any tactical changes you made at half-time as opposed to mindset? Pr probably yes, um, but it was more the, the tactics that we set out to play. Um, because things weren't working in the first 10, 15 minutes, we're conceding tries. We, we, we as a natural response is to, to overplay and try and score tries and, and win back um, the scoreboard. But England's defence was, was so strong that if we're playing in our half, it could actually mean we're further behind the scoreboard. So we had to talk through that process in the second half that we still have to put them under pressure. We, we have to be better with a kick chase. If we're kicking, we've got to make sure we don't allow their back three into into open space, which is what happened in the first half. And there was much more balance to our game in the second half, and, and credit goes to Finn Russell. I uh, thought his decision-making was excellent and put pressure on England through his kicking game, um, attacked very well with ball in hand, and obviously had some big, big moments in defence too.